Good morning, everyone. Hope you're well. It is 10 a.m. Sunday morning here in Hong Kong, which I guess that still means 10 p.m. Saturday night in the East Coast for Steph. Party animal, yep. as always, has already finished her rounds at the nightclub and back home already. How are you? Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Hi, guys. What's everybody up to? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, so... My husband and I, we adopted a dog today. So Woo! super excited, super happy. It's going to take some adjusting for her because she's a puppy mill rescue. Um, so yeah, adopt, don't shop. What, 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 what? Happy for yeah. you guys. She looks super cute, I'm sure, with some time to adjust. It's going to be like one of those stories that I obsessively scroll through on Instagram on the dodo of the turnaround <laughs> and the change in personality and the blossoming of their character. It's going to be great. Good on you. I'm proud of you and happy that now you're, I'll save her name for you to share at some future time, but that your puppy has a, a new start. That's great. Yeah. Ah, so, hi, oh. Philip, Juan, Jerry, Sean, Marcelano, Jay, Kevin. Hello, gentlemen. So, I'm guessing that my theme was maybe a little bit too niche, because, or it's just a bad month for photo competitions, because our street comp didn't have many, our wedding comp didn't have many, and then our Hollywood glamour had really probably the lowest number of entries we've had this year. So for next month, we're going to make it as broad as we can so that it really can allow everyone to enter without having to, you know, worry that they're not meeting the criteria. So the theme next week is just going to be portraits. So a snapshot of your husband or wife or someone on the street, candid or posed, studio or outdoors, natural light or flash, whatever you like, as long as it ha it's a portrait, then it qualifies. So it should have a subject. It needs to be your own work. Make it, you know, at least 4K resolution, the still file. I'm gonna be streaming it from my office so you can send it as a nice big high quality JPEG and then just rename the file to your own name. So like Stephanie Fam slash portrait and then we'll be good to go. So I will put all of those details up at mattgranger.com forward slash live in after the show so you can reiterate all of that and make sure that you're on the same page but portraits for next week i know it's a topic we've done before but you know steph and i whilst i do love this opportunity before during and after the show to chat with steph we don't really do the show for ourselves it's to give you guys a chance yeah. to enter your shots and for <laughs> us all to come together and chat so if we're not getting entries, then I might as well choose a topic that we can get more entries. So then more of you can be involved. So any other news for you, Steph? I mean, not that that's not big um, enough. Rearrange the apartment a little bit, but yeah, that's pretty much it. What about you? All for what the news puppy? do you have? Yeah, all for the puppy. Excellent. Um, well, pet wise, we are now putting my cat Loki on a diet because she got a little bit chunky around the edges, which is surprising because she was always so active. Um, let's see, let's see. Oh, I've been shooting a lot with, do I have them here? No. The, a couple of giant lenses I've had on loan from Nikon, so I've been out shooting birds and that kind of thing lately. I will be going out again on Monday and Tuesday to do more of that. And because I'm returning the lenses on Wednesday. And tonight, uh, for those of you who might remember, I've shot with model Mel a couple of times. Or she's actually, uh, she owns a dance studio and she's a part-time model. Um, I shot some YouTube videos with her and I also released the uh, a complete download course over at Art Nude Portraiture with her. Her school is having a showcase tonight, so I'm heading along to see their annual show i guess put on by all the students so that should be fun um otherwise everything's good um nice. i just put live uh the pre-sale for my latest course which is about 1920s hollywood glamour uh, which is what inspired this topic i thought it's a nice little tie-in and seeing i'm talking about 1920s glamour already why not um 
Uh, just reading the chat. That's all great to hear. You guys are so sweet. Um, yeah, so I have spliced in some of my shots in amongst the shots we'll look at of the guests of the entrance today. Uh, partly because we didn't have too many <laughs> entries, but this way I'll be able to talk you through some of the different shots and how we got them and give you an idea of what's in the course. Now, just to be clear, looking at the entrance, uh, so my course is over at Art Nude Portraiture. It is for mature audiences, but I have censored the pink bits that seem to upset some people. <laughs> they are still kind of implied. You see the model's body shape, but then nipples or privates have been covered. And looking at the other entries, it's the same. There's nothing that's going to, you know, get you in trouble if somebody looks over your shoulder. I guess it depends where you are, though. But just a heads up. So, um... Let's just get into it and we can chat about it as we go through and we'll take a look at all of cool. our entrance as we go. If you guys have any questions, Juan is in the room, my lovely Juan. Hi, Juan. I can't wait to see you. Um, so if you have any questions, please send them in and he will collate them for us. Mod of the century. Now, where's <laughs> my button? Here's my button. Button. Bu uh. Um, now, let me know, guys, have I put Steph's face right under the YouTube logo? If so, I will move her up the page. I always forget that the logo's often in the bottom right-hand corner. I'll just lean up. <laughs> so, this first one. Um, so, this is our model that I was shooting for for the weekend. Wow. Say what? I said, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, this uh, was a shot we added canned atmosphere to the shot and this was actually as you do the spiral staircase in the two-story pool house that was out the back of the main house that we were shooting for the the day um, where did so, you shoot this uh so it's in the hollywood hills uh which is like pretty close to hollywood but the hollywood hills is actually a huge district and it's, it was built in, the, in 1925 by Charlie Chapman for his uh, lover. I don't know if it was like side lover or just not married lover, um, Mary Astor. And when you search Mary Astor house, there's like a, 10 of them around the world. So this was her Hollywood Hills home and she had them one in Spain and one here and one there. She was a silent era film actress who was huge apparently and Charlie Chaplin's lover um, and this one it's like five stories high um, all kind of small floors with a big spiral staircase through the house and then this as I say is the pool house out the back but it's been owned and recorded in the house by the Rolling Stones and Marilyn Manson and I think Fleetwood Mac and Andy Samberg and all what? these actors have owned it because, I mean, it's Hollywood and it's a multi-million dollar home with loads of characters. So, of course, loads of actors have lived there. Um, apparently, Marilyn Manson, I don't know his discography that well, but his biggest album was filmed, uh, was recorded in this house. Um, so anyway, this one. It that was looks awesome. already back. <laughs> so Megan, the the model, she's. I mean, I, I'm not to body shame anyone who doesn't have a figure like her, but if you think of like classic, uh, kind of elegant feminine, she's just got this incredible body shape. She's like six foot tall, all natural. Again, no judgments, but all natural. A uh, yoga type girl who's still curvy in all the right places, but just, yeah, has a yoga body. She And she really knows her poses. Maybe not quite as well as Steph, but in terms of like sensual poses, she does them so great. So this one was backlit by natural light. But on the left there, I actually put a flash way out in the garden to supplement the left-hand side and give us the shot there. We got some shooting with the light on more of an angle. And you really got this starburst through all of the atmosphere. So it worked out kind of nice. Um, this next one was in the spiral staircase in the house. As I said, it's like a five-story house. So this staircase went all the way up. 
which was very fun for Jonathan and I lugging a four camera setup plus two stills cameras <gasps> up and down the stairs. There's no elevator, is there? <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, but hey. the cool thing we, part of it was, and in a way it was, can I say lucky? It turned out for the best. Uh, Megan was running late on the day, so we had time to really figure out our shot list to start outdoors in the sun whilst we had good light and shadow and then the pool house and then the bottom floor and work our way up because the exit was actually on the second to top floor of the house and then it goes down a hill. So we were able to Is basically just go up. Is this all included in the up. course in terms of like what the place looks like? Yeah, it would. It's, it's, I mean, it cost thousands for us to rent for the day as you would expect, but being Hollywood, it's used for this kind of stuff all the time. So there was no hiding what we were doing or whatever. We just said we're a three person crew for an art nude photo shoot. And that's what we're here for. So it was really cool for that. Um, and this is the one out by the pool that I was saying. So I'll show you guys later one that I took of her in the pool house window where I was down where she was shooting back at her, but this is the reverse. So using the really hard light and sun of kind of midday Hollywood to hide her face like that, I thought is quite nice. So we've got a bunch of options here. Hi 101, hi JD, hi Rob Spreet. Um, this, the images we're showing now to those who are just joining are from my new 1920s Hollywood glamour course that I've just put on pre-sale now. It's actually 99% ready to go. I just need to finish putting together the gear guide, but it will launch uh, next Friday. And for the pre-sale, it's 75% off. So you order it now, it'll go live on Friday. When it goes live, the price jumps, so get involved. Now, let's, we'll circle back to that. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. If you have any funny, snarky comments, 101 blog, fire away. Now this is actually, this dress reminds me a lot of a shot I have just coming up of my own as well. This first one, let's turn on our info about the files. Here we go, that's all showing, lovely. Alberto Coronel. Um, the very background looks like a painted set. Not that that's a problem. Oh, I probably don't need to zoom into 10,000% or whatever that was. Um, yeah, oh, and there's lines and stuff here. I think maybe the background has actually been photoshopped in, but um, the outfits, it's really nice. I don't know, do you think the top and bottom match, Steph? I feel like the top and her uh. hair and makeup match really well, but I don't know. I love the style of the dress, but I don't know if that fabric really matches the top, not that I'm a fashion critic. I mean, I'm not a fashion critic either, but I think it kind oh. of works, and I actually like the vintage type of look on it. I feel like it kind of, it's, is it on the whole image, or is it just the... It's the background. Background. It kind of looks like a Matisse painting, the, like, the background, except not colorful i like it though i mean it's being resourceful if you don't have like an ideal set or like a room that you can dress up mm. like i think having a, a backdrop or i mean even photoshopping is something like this and and i think it was actually done pretty well honestly mm. so something that we talk about in this course is actually having a and it's something that steph and i I think collaborate uh, of the people I shoot with, we have done it the best in the past where once you have a vision for what the shoot's going to be, how you keep reinforcing that. And it goes beyond just like choosing period appropriate clothing. So if you really want it to have an old Hollywood vibe, then you, the way you do the makeup, the way you do the hair and even the kind of posing. And if you want to, you know, really go all out, the kind of lighting you use and maybe even the equipment that you're using because like some of the shots that I shot uh, wouldn't have been shot in the 1920s because I was shooting them with super fast aperture, super sharp lenses that weren't available 100 years ago, nothing like that. 
Um, so, you know, the editing treatment can really come into it. So I'm actually going to give this one from Alberto a pick and you can bet we're going oh, to have picks. a high proportion <laughs> of winners this week because we had so few uh, entries. So we will uh, yeah. we'll be generous and thankful and, you know, encouraging by giving extra ones. Although I would have given this a pick anyway. I think that's a great shot, Alberto. And goodness me. Actually. Can... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, actually, I know that you and I, we often do that for like the shoots that we have planned, like just kind of going over it with the bottle and just like figuring out where to shoot it and all those steps. Is that also covered in the course as well for the one that you have upcoming? Because I think the locations are amazing. I think it would be really hard to settle on like, hey, we're just going to shoot in this one area and then this one area. I feel like you would be shooting like all day all day <laughs> yeah it was a non-stop like yeah the the shoot was hectic and i go through it in the course How long but was when it? you uh just like six hours door to door but when you book a location you it's like the door opens at 10 on the dot and you get your tour then you can unpack then you can get set up then you can shoot so we were really six running through all of that but I had seen all the pictures of the place and had uh, outfits and locations already in mind. I had kind of a shot list in my head and then, yeah, we go through it on camera, but basically going through each of the different locations, what I could see would be the different spots to shoot and potential outfits. And then super nerdy, you would have loved it, made a list of like one, two, three, what were, you know, the highest priority so that... We had, for example, I can't remember the timing now, but an hour at the pool house. So let's get all of the three star shots done. Then if we have any time left over, we do the two star, then the one star, so that we don't miss out on, you know, the three star ones that were up in the living room that was the last room we were shooting of the day. And actually we kept to it pretty well. We did spend a little bit too much time outdoors, but pretty much on. Um, oh, I love organization. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um so let's take a look at our next one. So that's a pick for Alberto. I need to remember to switch back because last week I was we were talking about pictures and I hadn't shown it. Gary Martin. So this is really pretty. Um, hmm. The only thing it is the I don't know if it's intentional, but the way the lighting falls off. I almost feel like we're getting nothing from the bottom third of the frame. I don't know if it really adds to be there. Um, now, the theme... Yeah, I think if this was, like, cropped in a little bit, if you're not going to light her legs. Yeah. Now, this is not a 1920s competition, so there's no reason that you had to hear. But I do kind of feel like it's so super sharp and crisp it almost does it almost doesn't match the outfit and the perspective anyway no matter what era this is shot with not that i would necessarily say you need to d do that but sometimes and i rarely do this kind of stuff but on a shot like this maybe actually putting in not a full vignette but a small you know uh gradual filter to it just it feels very clean and clinical but i feel like it could look uh you know with a bit of a softer edit it could look a little bit more of a cohesive image um but i like that one too what do you think of the the outfit pairing steph and the the pose what about the right her right hand camera left uh actually yeah that was good eye i was gonna point that out i think just because of where the light is if she were to kind of angle her body open up more towards the light and probably rest her right arm on top of the is it a chase yeah um and just kind of like lounge there i think that there would have a better like light fall off for like the other half of her body but i like the resourcefulness i mean if you don't have a crazy nice location, having a simple backdrop and a chase and then also working with the wardrobe, uh, like it works for me. I really like it. And, you know, looking at this, if you haven't done much studio shooting, folks, 
you might think this is like in a thousand foot studio in some designer place. This could totally be in a living room beside the sofa, yeah. TV, kids bassinet, whatever, with just a painted backdrop. <laughs> yeah. Behind me is a painted backdrop and then my bookshelf and all around me is some junk and on my table is a bunch of gear everywhere. It's just about selective framing, choosing the right angle. Um, I will give that a star and we'll come back and I'll see. I don't know if it's pick. Um, Jerry Winterson. So, um, very tight central composition. What it, it almost feels like, I don't know if it is just the exposure, the, the contrast is so harsh, but it also feels like the the clarity has been really slid down. And when you do that, the bright areas tend to get a little bit brighter and detailless, which makes them look like they're blown out, even though the histogram is showing us nothing is blown out. If we go in 200% like on her face and arm, there's just no detail left there, which makes it feel blown out as well. Not sure about that. I feel like that's a very like Hollywood glamour type of feel though. Like this is something that I would probably see in old like CD covers or posters from back then. Maybe. We've talked about this before, but there's this, let me show you guys. Uh, I can't show you too much of my new course page because it's got boobies everywhere, but... Um, <laughs> Have oh. doobies. Um, it I think maybe this is the kind of thing you're talking about with the old Hollywood style. Oh, you can't see. Um, well, if you can check the live stream, you can. Otherwise, Google Studio yeah. Harcourt and you can see it. But they... Yeah, that. No, I get what you're saying. <laughs> I guess maybe if this is like the young rock and roll... Uh, starlet kind of rather than the old elegant starlet um i i know she's wearing a kind of lingerie but it doesn't really have a glamour type vibe to me though this shot it has like a edgy grungy kind of vibe for some reason which is strange because she's wearing pearls maybe the the kind of closed yeah. off posing I think it's just the angle of her pose is this very kind of hunched over. I feel like if she actually shifted her legs to the right and just her whole body more to like one side or the other, because um, because of how she's sitting on the chair too, mm. I would probably lift up her left butt cheek and leg just so that way there's more of a curve um, if the light's going to be from her left so as a glamour shot, I really agree with you. Although glamour and highly sexualized isn't the same thing in my mind. I'm not saying that you were saying that either. But Steph does always have good advice in terms of how you can shift your weight to get a more flattering line through the body. And lifting the butt up isn't to present the vagina to the camera. It's to get yeah, a nicer no. shape of the <laughs> bum or to lengthen the legs or that kind of thing. Um, I actually, I agree and I disagree with you. And by the way, when Steph and I disagree with each other, it's not like we don't, don't talk to each other for two days. We yeah. respectfully disagree we about a lot of things. We argue hardcore <laughs> afterwards. I, After the show, we like yell at each other. You're like, done. Um, and you, you guys are welcome to um, <laughs> disagree with us as well. No thin skin here. But what I was saying is I don't get a glamour vibe from this and but I think it does have a grungy vibe. And if you were trying to get it to glamour, then I agree with your point. But on how it is now, I think the kind of the unusual pose works for what it is, but not what the competition theme is. I actually think if we were bringing the shadows down even more on this and then like that, that kind of a final edit, I think works for the overall theme of where I feel like this shot is going. Not that I think it makes it better for the competition, but I do think as a an image without a theme, that kind of a contrast balance, I think works better if you, I don't know if you're even seeing that yet. Um, so I see GCD8 
feels that this young lady is aggressive. Jared Ferry likes it. One on one blog is going to bed. Good night, old fella. Hope to see you soon. Hi. Gerard Ferry is giggling at boobies. It's a funny word. <laughs> um, yeah. And JD Morris is either expressing his artistic vision or fucking with me saying that he thinks just a pop of color like a red rose in her hand would make the shot work better. I agree. I think maybe having some bugs and lotus flowers would work well here. A little bit of tryptophobia. Have you been getting the the bug things I'm sending you on Instagram? Because you don't seem to reply. I've been... <laughs> There's actually some people that have been tagging me in their bug photos. And I'm like, why? <laughs> and it's like, I'm sorry, Steph. And I'm like, then why do you keep doing it? I don't understand. Just because Matt told you to, what the hell? They're just thoughtful. Um, let's take a look at a couple more. Uh, no, actually, let's first jump out. And if you have any questions, send them through. Otherwise, I have one here from Jerry Dalton. Um, Jerry, ask Matt. I've noticed when you're shooting, you'll often snap two to four frames of the same pose in quick succession. Can you comment on the value of this? So it depends on the setup, and I don't do it all the time. And often the the sound of the mirrorless can sound like maybe four shots, but it's often two. The you hear the cook cook cook, which is actually one shot. Um, yes, I know. I'm quite the imitator. I'm like that guy from Police so Academy, <laughs> Michael, whatever his name was. Um, so it's kind of the same way that if you're shooting a bird taking off from a perch, if you have 10 frames a second or 20 frames a second or 30 frames a second, the chance of you getting the exact frame that you want where everything is working is higher if you take more. And it gives you a chance of, if the bird pulls a really derpy face whilst it's taking off, that you catch that as well. Taking two or three shots in quick succession rather than just one, if especially if I'm shooting fast, and often when I'm shooting for YouTube, it's more that, that I, if I were just working with Steph shooting without any other cameras rolling, the way we would shoot would be different. But for YouTube, I need to be checking on my cameraman, thinking about the lesson I'm delivering, checking my watch to make sure that we're not running over time. <laughs> so taking three shots means I'm less likely to only capture one where the eyes were half closed or where she you know, was adjusting a, an itchy nose or whatever. Um, so it's just-, just my nose. She does it a lot. <laughs> There's something broken up there. Um, so it's just- the wedgies, oh man. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Um, so it's just to, to have that little insurance, basically. Um, if I was using a high-powered strobe, I probably wouldn't pop, pop, pop three times straight in a row. But it means that if I only am taking one, like I would if I was shooting, I, I was just editing for the private members library, a shoot that I, a Shibari shoot I did in Lima five years ago, four years ago. And for that, I was shooting with a Hasselblad 100 megapixel camera. By the way, as I was looking at the files, I think they may be the most spectacular files of any camera I've ever used. Shame that camera is still $33,000 just for the body. And it's a six or seven year old camera. Um, but being that that is one frame a second or whatever, and such huge files, I could see I took so f many fewer shots. And yes, my hit rate as a percentage of the number of shots was higher because I was probably composing more carefully. But where she did have one eye slightly closed or whatever, like it didn't quite work or there was a bug flying right behind her, I only had the one shot. So if there was an issue like that, I had no backup for it and that was a shoot where I had no video cameras rolling so it was a uh, exactly what I was just describing um, couple uh, uh, okay other questions um, that 33,000 like broke me wow that's a lot yeah uh, they go higher than that geez. too there's a um, Jesus well these are, and I'm gonna, people are gonna say that I'm a Fuji hater again, but, oh, you remember when <laughs> it's, um, 
it's like um, Mr. Marvel's uh, camera that he shoots with. Oh. So he, our friend, uses a hundred megapixel Phase One camera. Actually, his costs more. Um, That's why I don't touch it. He uh, would hand it to me and be like, "Hey, do you want to review the photos?" I'm like, "No, you could. No. I'll just look at the computer." <laughs> but it's just if you're talking like full frame sensor to a Fuji medium format or the small Hasselblad like the X1D sensor to this one, we're talking boop much bigger sensor and actually to tom's one it's bigger again so the camera and body and viewfinder thirty-three thousand. just the back twenty-seven thousand, and they do a 400 which is a multi-shot camera and i think it's significantly more again yeah forty-eight thousand dollars so unless we win the lottery, I won't be looking at one of those. Well, I'll be looking, but I won't be buying. <laughs> Buy a camera, down payment for a house. What what kind of house can you get with a thirty thousand dollar down payment? You need. I'm 30... saying down payment. I don't know. It's a, it helps. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um... I'm just saying. <laughs> Um, Sean's saying, uh, that you never know when a dog or cat might appear and throw off the schedule. Mate, you're, you're right, but you have, you That's only know true. the, the start of it. I can't tell you how many times that happens and we don't even include it in YouTube because it, we think this is just getting ridiculous. We really can't be doing this. When Steph and I were in the park shooting last time, actually in one of the outfits we're going to see Megan wearing shortly, um, I would say we stopped, interrupted what we were talking about and then went to talk to dogs or just completely stopped filming 20 times in an hour. It was pretty ridiculous, but Were those worth people it. that will purposely walk in a certain direction in hopes that the dog will stop us? Like, I think like, they're going that way. So let's, way. let's run this way and then just try and make little noises so that hopefully the dog comes but the owner hasn't yeah. heard that you were enticing it yeah we're those people yeah it so. we're we're those people and plus i blink a lot like when we're shooting outside so that's also another reason <laughs> the sun's bright it's like look up there I'm like so john uh, 101 <laughs> blog has a very important question steph um if it's a close-up picture of a bug and it's selectively colored who of us is going to eliminate it from the competition first? Me. I would probably leave it up just to torture you, so that's true, yeah. Um, Mr. Sanchez asks, will you be using the iPhone 13 in your future for shoots? Is this it, the official game changer in filming? So I don't know if you've heard about it, Steph, but uh, you know how... Uh, you can with what what phone are you using now stephanie pam i think it's the can you 11 show me? max pro i should know this this and it's case. curved right and it's kind of that the phone itself is rounded as well it's not like square edged inside yeah so yeah it's rounded it should be just or like just this look one at my settings. this one at the back Yes. Okay, so yeah, that's actually the same that I have. So, you know, you yeah, can 11 take... 11 Pro Max. Okay, so you know, you can take a still on that and then adjust the focus point later or the depth of field later. So they're bringing that to the video side on the 13 so that you can... Are you serious? Yeah, but I think you might... Well, no, it'll probably work in Adobe, but... It'll be easier if you're editing on Mac, but so you can film it in 4K and then it will let you do in edit smooth focus pulls to any point in the scene. And it's shooting like, I think some raw formats, that kind of thing. So it is stuff that's at the moment only in super crazy cinema cameras. Of course, it's still an iPhone sensor. But I'll tell you guys, we do mix in all kinds of cameras when I'm shooting 
mainly for YouTube, but occasionally if you know we need it for a course as well. Um, I'm often filming with an A7S III, which is a super primo camera for video, in my opinion, in my kind of little niche. But then I'll have a Z6 Mark II as a second camera sometimes, the a GoPro, the Sony RX0, which is a bigger sensor GoPro basically, often as well. And then, you know, when I was out shooting birds the other week, um, I'm shooting the birds, the birds are too far away to be caught on film. So my wife would have her 12 Pro iPhone to get some slow video shots of me that we can use as B-roll and it mixes together just fine, especially when it's gonna be compressed onto YouTube anyway. So uh, I have ordered the 13 Pro Max, yes. Um, partly because this is, well, Actually, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this, except that my other, you ask what's going on for me, Steph, my only big news at the moment is the course went live, playing with nice lenses, my cat got fat, and joy of joys, I changed my mobile phone carrier because the one I've had sucks, and got a really awesome 5G plan, but this old, older phone doesn't support 5G, so... The new one does, so I'll have that access. It's so dumb, I'm in Hong Kong, which is like this technological mecca, and I was with three mobile here, and like every day I'd be unable to stream my, check my email or stream YouTube videos because the connection was so unreliable. So I'm happily now with a different carrier. Um, MJ Sesita. Do you recommend iPhones for street photography? I wouldn't say I recommend them per se. I think, like, I, I personally, I do enjoy the Apple products, but I know that there's Android phones out there that have better value for money and equally good cameras, sometimes better. Definitely much higher resolution if that's an issue for you. Um, I wouldn't say it's the best camera for the job, but it is if you're someone who feels like you want something that isn't, you know, too in someone's face, an iPhone isn't threatening at all, and you always have it with you. Hi, Timmy, thank you for wearing pants as you walk around in the background. Um, <laughs> it's a nice change. Um, I'll let them know later. <laughs> yeah, it is a nice change. Um, but I, I personally have a couple of series of things that I'm working on, and one is all being shot on my cell phone because it's just... I always have it with me, so uh, yeah, why not? Now, anyway, that was a great little segue. Thank you for all the questions. Send in any yeah. more that you have. Um, and we will get back to them, but let's jump back in and take a look at some shots. Now, here we have, oh, now, straight off the bat, this is quite Hollywoody. Um, so I think this may be the kind of body shape that uh, Marilyn, no, Marilyn Monroe had because I think she was like a size, I don't know what it is in America, but like a size 16. She was like a, an average body type, not a average for Hollywood, but an average curvy, voluptuous body type. Um, I, the animal print I think works great. There's only two things that jump out at me that I don't think work too well. What, anything jump out at you, Steph? Uh, is there like a haloing going on on the edges of her? I'm not really sure what it is. Um, but personally, I think also like cropping in. I think this is too much of like the, the legs of the stool chair. Yes, so I think what has happened here is the background wasn't as dark as the the author wanted. This is Jay Frandano um, to go with the black and white, black and white, black and white theme through the shot. He has put a brush in to darken up the background. I don't know if it's coming through on YouTube, but you can see down in here and here and pretty much around her. As Steph said, there's a halo where he's put a brush to darken the background but hasn't has tried not to catch her and it hasn't been done very cleanly. The other thing is it's possible it's the makeup, but 
her face skin tone is super yellow compared to her body, it doesn't really look right. Also, if you're going for a cohesive theme, I don't think the black roots shining through like that really works that well. And I think that's probably also because you've dropped the black levels, it's made them pitch black as black or blacker than the background. I think you could soften that a little bit. They're like crazy black. Um, but otherwise, the pose, the concealing with the bed sheet, all of that is great. And keep in mind for a shot like this, she could be wearing full underwear just with the hip band, the waistband really up in her hips to hide it. Um, she could be wearing a strapless bra as well or just nipple covers or something. So a shot like this doesn't have to be, you know, fully naked, exposed and in quite a prone position. It can be covered and comfortable and you get the... She could probably have a bodysuit on, actually. Yeah. Well, we did that in our implied course. We did a whole shoot that looks like quite close to being <laughs> nude, but completely covered, yeah. including stomach, back, everything. So it's then just a matter of, okay, everything's working here. Can you just move this by half an inch, that by half an inch to get everything in place? Or moving the photographer's position left or right slightly, like here, if the photographer went three inches to their left, you would then see the exposed hip. And if there were underwear on, you would see it. So shooting from this vantage point covers it. So pick, nicely done. Um, remember to send in any questions. Now here I have put in a little sensor. There was only the tiniest little bit of nip slipping in there, but I thought I'd cover it anyway. And that uh, <laughs> gown kind of reminds me of what they're using in that shot as well. And it reminded me of this dress that Alberto had her wearing, the, the flaring out. Um, this is the same location? Yeah, so, well, different part. We basically had like 10 locations at this one property. This location was one of the ones that sold it to me even more than the spiral staircase. It was, it looked like it's about to fall down. It was a fourth floor balcony covered in all these vines and it looks like it's decaying and dangerous, but it was actually probably the most solid place in the house. It was all concrete and really strong. <laughs> but with you know, vines and beautiful trees and everything out there, beautiful diffuse lighting there. So this was one that was just, uh, it was a here's one, who was it who asked again? I forgot, the, was it Gerard? Um, was that I was shooting in low burst mode because I basically had her doing some spins, walking towards me, taking the robe off, putting the robe on, walking backwards and forwards to get her in different amounts of movement. I changed the shutter speed around so that I got somewhere as she turned, the hair was slightly blurring out, but her shoulders weren't, that kind of thing. Uh, this one was in the living room. We did, this was the last location that we shot in, so a few different variations here. And this one is, we went for this much darker theme on this one because there was a statue of like an angel there that was smashed to pieces on the left. And right behind there was the recording studio where Marilyn Manson recorded his album. So I thought this all kind of a darker vibe for that shot would work nicely. And this was a, not really a 1920s, well, I don't know what kind of sexy play lingerie they wore a hundred years ago, but this was a, an outfit that uh, Megan brought along to wear for herself. Do we have any other questions? If not, I'll jump back in to our entrance. Oh, yes, I see a question there. That sucks. Um, Tabahi, have you ever forgotten your SD card when you go for doing a photo shoot? For a shoot for something like a job or something, not that I can remember, but I have like gone to uh, go out for a day of shooting just for myself or to, you know, out for dinner or whatever. And I'm taking a camera and then realize it, I didn't bring a battery or a card or one or the other. <laughs> um, but when it's something that I'm, you know, if I'm going to film a course or a YouTube video or a client job, 
then I have packing sheets and you know I'll the day before run through what are the different kits we're going to need, what are the different extra accessories and we you know physically check it off the list so that doesn't happen. Um, Dimple Poji, do you remember the first flash you bought and do you still use it? Uh, yes and no. So I had some flashes in high school that I used. I don't remember what they were and I don't use them. The first one that I bought for a purpose, I do, it was a Vivita beast of a flash for doing off-camera flash. Um, and I don't still have it. After that, I bought some, I think they were SB26s, great flashes. I still have one of them around, but I don't take it. No, I don't know if I have it here. Maybe it's in storage in Sydney still. Um, yes, so that kind of answers the question, but I have probably 50 flashes for that I have that are sitting here unused at the moment because I'm not traveling the world leading uh, photo workshops, unfortunately. Um, Sean Vine asks, Steph, have you ever done underwater shoots? I have, actually. They're very hard. <clears throat> it's more so like I keep floating, so it's really hard to kind of like stay under the water. And depending on the clothes you're wearing, if you're doing swimwear, it's a lot easier. But if you're having like those really long gowns that you're trying to float in the water, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to kind of kick and surface. So make sure your models are uh, very good at swimming. Mm. Yeah. Hide some floaties under their dress, perhaps. <laughs> um, we only have a few more entries, so let's jump back in and see what we think. Let us know what you guys think as well and any other questions. Uh, now, for me, this one from Kevin Connery is so close. I I think the outfit and the theme, so everything, um, the fact that it's a little soft also kind of works, but I feel like it's a little soft because I think he's missed focus. Um, it looks like the focus is on the fringe, not on her eye. Um, not the end of the world. The only thing is I feel like the left of frame is giving us nothing and the right of frame has this epic back of the chair that we're missing. Um, like just taking a small step to your left would clear that up and then cropping through her hand here doesn't really work either. But I feel like her, her makeup, her outfit, the background and even the, the light position all work great for this theme. So I'm going to give it a pick anyway. What do you think, Steph? I was going to give it a pick. But yeah, uh, I think if you just remove the pillows just remove all of those distractions i think that this would be really awesome and maybe even if you're going to have it like have her more leaning towards the back of the chair because i think the design on the chair itself is like super cool just to see more of like the edge of it mm -hmm. yeah nice um what do we got what do we got uh why don't you go first on this one steph marcelano Oh, I like how you try to make it look very vintagey, vintagey, mm. vintage like. Oh, what are words? Um, I think the expression works. I feel like I would want it to be framed out a little bit more. It looks like she has this amazing gown that she's wearing. So I think seeing more of it and it looks like she's on a really magnificent chase too. I think I would just frame out but expression works. I think I just would like to see more. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about the, the border, but I do like the color treatment on this. Mm -hmm. Agree with the treatment. When you're shooting any shoot, it's good to get a variety of options. So I would guess Marcelano got wide, mid and tight shots. And this was the tight one he went to submit. So I think as a tight shot, it works well. Uh, it's just personal taste, but I really dislike the border. Um, and I think if it's going to be the tight shot coming into around, I can't get rid of the border entirely without cropping the chair, but coming into around that kind of a frame, 
I think works even better. Um, but yeah, I still like it and it still gets a pick. Um, this Did you pick every photo so far? No. Usually I'm the pick monster. Well, there's only freaking <laughs> seven or eight entries. So what am I going to do? And there's some good ones. Um, <laughs> any other questions, okay, folks, okay. please do let us know because we don't have too much more time to us. Um, so keeping in mind, I agree this has a great 20s vibe to it. However, the theme for this week's comp wasn't 1920s. It was just Hollywood glamour. And I was actually thinking that could have caught been anything. You could have actors' headshots or sci like shots from Hollywood, which is definitely not a glamorous suburb if you've ever been there. Um, there were so many ways this theme could have gone, but, you know, we got what we got. Um, what about this one from Paul Bivens? So I have to agree, his title is Glamour Shoot. I agree this is kind of a glamour shoot, the way the skin's been softened and treated. Um, I don't get a Hollywood vibe from it, though. And have I cropped on this wheelie? Yes, I have. There we go. Um, you want to talk through Pose? Um... I think uh, the arm across, it's like she's kind of like hiding a little bit. I feel like if she's going to have this really fun expression and she's like happy, it's a little bit more open. Um, the arm, it looks just a little bit awkward, like she's not sure what to do with it. It looks like she might have been tugging on the strap, but it's hard to tell. Um, but her expression is beautiful and she's beautiful. I just don't know if the screams Hollywood glamour. Probably this exact shot in a different dress would. Um, yeah. Looking at her right hand, which is camera left, take a look at some of you know Steph's portfolio and look at finger placement. It looks uncomfortable because it's all bunched up basically, like it was, as Steph said, on its way to do something or just put there. If you have a less experienced model who isn't so comfort confident in posing that stuff and a lot of people aren't or that they may be confident but not talented um, is to have them actually do something saying pretend to play with the strap or pretend to run your hand through your hair you do get just weird claw hands sitting places because yeah. <laughs> you don't know what to do and it. it is or odd but if you said you know uh, wrap your finger around the the strap and just keep moving it up and down, whatever, then all the right muscles are being activated and it is something to keep the hand busy. If you like to look great, if you don't, then change it, but actually have it in motion is a good thing. And then this is very typical, but if you wanna then finish this shot to the next level is get her hair under control. It's difficult, but just having a brush on site once everything's working, have someone step in to just brush it so it's all nice and flat, it would, I think, elevate the shot if it weren't looking quite so poofy. Um, yeah. And just a yeah. friendly word, Paul, check out my recent video and everyone else I did on clarity versus dehaze versus texture. I think you might get some tips on better ways to retouch her face that don't... Uh, that yield a more natural result, but can still get the, the detail of the face under control if you're looking for a softer final look. Nice. Um, oh, and then we're back to mine. So this was in the bottom yeah. floor of the staircase that goes all the way up the house. And this one was the upstairs window of the pool house, which was where I was shooting from when she was uh, on the beside the pool and I think that's it now we need to what lens did you use for this oh that's an excellent question I don't remember I could have been I was for all oh. of it I was shooting two cameras oh it may be on the metadata though 24 to 70 or 70 to 200 uh well it was at... her legs look so long <laughs> oh you mean the <laughs> the downstairs one I thought you meant the, yes. the one in the window uh, the window one was ah, no. 24 to 70 at 70. And the other one, yes, her legs are, uh, let's say, accentuated. This was at 17.5. Yes. She has flipper feet. She's like Michael Phelps. Um, 
she is. Does she swim? I don't know. <laughs> she doesn't have real flipper feet, but she is like close to six foot tall. But no, I was low with an ultra wide angle lens trying to get that arc through the shot. If we wanted to get rid of her leg distortion and feet distortion, because the closer it gets to the edge of the frame, the more distorted it's going to be, we could take a look at our vertical positioning and bring her up like that. going to bring in some distortion. I probably have to bring it in past there. So something like that. We can see that makes it very hard to keep the angle of the wall there working. Um, yeah. Um, so let's take a look at our winner, our finalists and choose a winner or two. Um, so picked, flagged, Okay. I want to shoot here. Sorry? Yeah, right. So, <laughs> I want to shoot at that location. It's so it's so cool. <laughs> it was really cool, except it was boiling hot. Um, but yeah, old houses come with their own challenges. Um, now, of these four, let's choose one each, Steph. I think we can have more than one winner today. Okay. Uh, let's just recap them and who they are. Alberto Coronel, Jay Frandano, Kevin Connery, and Marcialano. It's tricky because they all have obvious things that I would like to have seen done differently, but then I say 90% of them is great. It's kind of hard for me to choose one out that's done more right than the others. Yeah. But let's bring it back. The theme is Hollywood glamour. So there should be an element of Hollywood to the shot. Um, it isn't necessarily about being from a particular time period though. So for me, oh, that doesn't really help separate them out. If it were a period one, then I think I would give it to Marcialano. Um, I feel like that does have the best overall period and it's got like the, the contact print border on it. This one from Frandano has real uh, Marilyn vibes. I feel like, I actually, okay. I think I'm gonna go with... Oh, it's harder once she chooses than I'd have to choose what? from the remaining... That's why I want to choose first. <laughs> uh, okay, I kind of want to go with... Kevin Connery. I think the styling, um, I mean, I think that there's still work that needs to be done, but I I still really much like it. And I think it fits really much? the Hollywood glamour. Yes. You really much like it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know words, guys. You know this. Super awesome, really much. Yeah. Um, Super awesome. I agree with all of that. Ah, uh, uh, see, now I just want to cheat and give everyone a prize. Um, oh, you don't do that. Come on. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with Alberto and this shot, whether it is a composite or not. The lighting is crafted really well. I think her, you know, it's easy to overlook these things, but actually her hair and makeup are really on point and that doesn't just happen accidentally. I think that's really nicely done. The, the outfit works, the pose really works. Like if you look at it from an overall theme of the image, everything does really fit nicely. I'm just not personally sure about the dress, but then I know nothing about fashion to know whether that was the same era as the rest of it. So Alberto, congratulations. Kevin, congratulations. And also Jay Frandano and Marcialano, thank you for entering and to our other entrants. Thanks guys. Great shots. Um, would have loved to see more entrants, but it is what it is. So next week, our theme is gonna be nice and broad, just portraits. So they would all qualify and I hope we will see a hundred entries. A million entries, uh, maybe just a hundred. Oh wait, uh, no, it's gonna be, 
It's gonna be difficult. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not not that many. <laughs> Any more questions, friends? Let's see. Questions. Um, I don't see any more coming through from one. Let's just quickly check the chat. Sean Vine, I'm enjoying the Lightroom course you put up. Thank you, Sean. For those who didn't know, the, my new learn.mattgranger.com site went live this month. And all month, it's 65% off everything and 80% off a couple of bundles. And the I have a, an introduction to Lightroom course up completely free to stream. That's only this month, so don't miss out. Um, I don't see any other questions, so that might be it. Nice and tight, right on an hour. I, I almost Ooh. read out some of the texts that Juan had sent me yesterday that weren't questions for today. Juan knows what we were talking <laughs> about, so it's lucky that I didn't. But he, you should ask him, Steph. He has some great ideas for book titles. Um, sorry, guys. Private joke. Shouldn't be doing that live on show. But... Um, <laughs> so, all the best to your new house, your new roommate, Steph. I hope she adjusts yes. nicely. Give my best to Timmy. Um, stay tuned, folks. We have some really cool videos coming in this coming week that I've filmed that I just need to catch up on editing. Um, the now, when does your course drop again? Oh, thank you. The, You're going to have to send so, me a link because I want to see the locations now, and what you did and the organization. Check over. I and know all that. you'll be so proud. Um, I can send you the video files ahead of time because they are all ready. Now, where is the actual course? I'm Ooh. making sure the page is at a safe place before I scroll. Okay, no boobies. Okay, uh, so it, <laughs> four days, 23 hours, pretty much. So I think it's... What day is that? Thursday, America time, Friday, Asia time, I think around this time of day so don't miss out well but the, but the pre-launch is available now though so ah, but mean, so that's to well... to buy you can buy it anytime in that four days 22 and get it at 75 percent off when the counter ends the yeah, course goes live oh you're such a good saleswoman stiff uh the course goes why live wait, guys? and then the price jumps up a bit it'll be i'm not sure exactly but it'll be on a uh, what am I trying to say? It'll go live and then it'll be on a launch sale and then it will revert to the full price. So right now is the cheapest price it'll ever be. So check it out. Um, and if we don't have any other questions, I think that's going to be it. All the best. Yes, so. Steph, Timmy, have a great weekend, folks. You Hope too. you get out and Good shoot. Good luck with Loki. Oh. <laughs> I wish I could. Hope she like, loses weight. Yeah, I don't know. I need to get her a little kitty treadmill or something like that. Um, yeah. Okay. That's it. Ciao, guys. Bye, get guys. Your portrait now shots we can yell at each other at... for disagreeing. Sorry, what? Oh yeah. Time now we for can us yell to at each other yeah. now. Uh, enter your portraits over at mattgranger.com forward slash live. It's in the chat now, and we'll see you guys later. Ciao. Bye.